Hello, I'm Amara Jones, and today is Wednesday, May 20th. This is Caffeine TV, your daily news brief, here to take you the three headline numbers in just three minutes, giving you a different take on everything from housing policy to the real housewives. The first number of today is 15, as in $15 an hour. That's by how much the Los Angeles City Council voted to raise the minimum wage there yesterday in America's second largest city. That city's mayor, Eric Garcetti, has vowed to sign it into law. Now, as we've spoken about here before, there's no way that you can work 40 hours a week at the current national minimum wage of $7.25, have just one other person in your household, and remember remain above the poverty line, but in high cost cities like Los Angeles, you can't even be single, work that much and still not be poor. And the vote by the Los Angeles City Council yesterday was an attempt to change all of that. Now, the hope is that the Los Angeles move will spur other cities across Southern California to raise their minimum wages, creating an entire region where work is rewarded. But don't leave in your car yet. Drive across country listing to Tupac's California IA. That's because the minimum wage will go to $10.60 next year and increase every year between now and 2020, reaching $15 an hour in that year. But with the vote on the national minimum wage stalled in Congress, the move by the LA City Council is one in the right direction. The next number today is 34, as in 34 million. That's how many airbags were recalled by airbag manufacturer Takata yesterday. Of course, along with the cars in which they are located in the largest product recall in the nation's history. Now, the problem is that when the Takata airbags deploy, they explode, sending shrapnel ricocheting around the confined space of a vehicle causing accidents. Now, Takata has known for 15 years about the defective nature of their product, but they tried to obscure that and slow walked government investigations into their activities that combined with the fact that there were pro-business regulators who were reluctant to take on such a dominant airbag manufacturer, paved the way for hundreds of accidents to take place in the intervening years. And all of this just goes to underscore that the increasingly cozy relationship between business and the government agencies that regulate them is bad for the rest of us. That's because lives hang in the balance. The last number up today is one as the city which took first place in the annual survey of America's fittest cities. That's Washington, D.C., followed by Minneapolis, St. Paul, with San Diego, California, rounding out the top three. The annual survey is done by the American College of Sports Medicine, who use things like obesity and heart disease to come up with their numbers. Now, it turns out that the fittest cities aren't those with the most gym memberships or the most packed Zumba classes, but those where 90% of the population lives within five to 10 minutes of of a public park or a public exercise space. It turns out, however, that the least fit city in America is Indianapolis, Indiana, which just goes to show that the state legislature there might want to pass fewer laws on religious freedom and more laws opening parks.